Some of you may have heard the news that Apple is working on this crazy thin iPhone 17 model, called the iPhone 17 Slim, or maybe even the iPhone 17 Air. And I bet you probably got a lot of questions. Questions like, how thin is this iPhone going to be? What specs will it come with? What camera will it have? And of course, how much will it actually cost? Well, I'm here to answer all of these questions and more. But before that, this winter, ESR has some amazing holiday deals running up to Christmas Day with some incredibly useful accessories for your mobile devices. Okay, so before I get into all of these iPhone 17 Air questions, I should probably clarify the idea behind it. I don't know if you guys remember, but back in June, Mark Gurman stated that Apple was planning on developing a new class of Apple devices that would be the thinnest and lightest products in their categories. We saw this first with the M4 iPad Pro, which at just 5.1 millimeters was the world's thinnest Pro tablet. We then saw the same thing with the Apple Watch Series 10, which, at just 9.7 millimeters, was the thinnest Apple Watch that Apple has ever made. And in that report, Mark Gurman also stated that in 2025, Apple will have a significantly skinnier iPhone 17 model, this iPhone 17 Slim or iPhone 17 Air. And this model is set to replace the Plus model of the iPhone, which just hasn't done so well in the past, as most people who wanted a large iPhone would simply just get the Pro Max instead. So in that case, next year, we'll have the iPhone 17, the iPhone 17 Air, the iPhone 17 Pro, and the iPhone 17 Pro Max, which I think is a far better lineup than what we have now, as each model will be unique rather than having the Plus model be an inferior version of the Pro Max. Also, the lineup would then perfectly resemble Apple's old MacBook lineup, where the MacBook Air was the weakest but slimmest option, the MacBook Pro was then the most powerful but thickest option, and then the regular MacBook set in the middle. I feel like this approach may be coming back with the iPhone 17 series. But okay, now that we know what the general idea of this iPhone 17 Air is, how thin could this iPhone actually be? Well, according to a recent in-depth report published by The Information, prototypes of the iPhone 17 Air have a thickness between 5 to 6 millimeters. And that would just be absolutely insane. Just to give you guys an idea, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is 8.25 millimeters thin. So the iPhone 17 Air would be up to 40% thinner. We've got our concept here at 5.5 millimeters. So just in between the thickness of Apple's multiple prototypes, and even at 5.5, it would still be 20% thinner than Apple's thinnest iPhone ever, the iPhone 6, which was just 6.9 millimeters. But okay, is this 5.5 millimeter thinness even possible? Well, Actually, yes. We've actually had plenty advancements in the tech industry recently, from sturdier and thinner chassis to new battery technologies, such as silicon carbon batteries, that are as thin as a credit card. And this is why some foldable phones, like the Honor Magic V3, can be insanely thin, at just 4.35 millimeters when opened. Or Huawei's trifold phone, the Mate XT Ultimate, that's even thinner at just 3.6. Now, of course, those are also foldable, so they do have multiple batteries, whereas the iPhone 17 Air will need to be slightly thicker to accommodate a single larger battery. Hence why a still thin but thicker body of 5 to 6 millimeters uh, would be needed here. Also, some of you out there, especially uh, Jerry Rig, may be wondering how durable would such a thin iPhone be? Well, the body is said to be a unibody design, again, very similar to the iPhone 6's design rather than the current sandwiched glass and metal chassis, which means that it should still be fairly durable. Now, there are some conflicting reports when it comes to the material of the chassis, though. The information claims that it will be made entirely out of aluminium, whereas Minji Kuo claims that it will still be a titanium aluminium frame, like on the iPhone 16 Pros, but with a lower percentage of actual titanium which to me does make more sense, as titanium is a stronger material than aluminium, and even in a lower concentration than on the Pro models, it will still give the chassis that extra strength that it needs. Okay, now earlier, I mentioned ESR's holiday promotions, and here I have two must-have accessories. One, ESR's 3-in-1 Maxi charger, with Qi 2 and CryoBoost. This device offers maximum wireless speeds, and fully charges the iPhone 16 Pro in just 1 hour and 51 minutes. Thanks to ESR's CryoBoost, which cools your device, heat is never an issue. Plus, you can add a watch charger to power your Apple Watch to 75% in just 70 minutes. And two, ESR's FlickLock AirPods case is a lifesaver if you've ever lost your AirPods like this in your room. 
Offering the ultimate drop protection, this rugged case uses magnets and an internal latch to keep the lid securely closed, but also easily accessible with one hand. On top of this, it comes with effortless MagSafe compatible charging to make your life easier. Check out ESR's holiday season promotion for up to 20% off using the links below, which is running until Christmas Day. But okay, what about the specs? Well, this is where things get a bit interesting. Because you see, despite the iPhone 17 Air having the most advanced design out of all four iPhone 17 models, the specs will actually be on the lower end here. Ming-Chi states that it will come with the standard A19 chip rather than the A19 Pro, and also with 8 gigs of RAM rather than 12 like the Pro models will be upgraded to. The good news is that we may be getting ProMotion as well as an always-on display, something that is set to come to the regular iPhone 17 model as well. And for me, the main reason why I don't use a regular iPhone despite being a fan of uh, the black and the green iPhone 16 is actually not a camera, but ProMotion. So if the iPhone 17 Air will indeed have it, then I may actually go for it instead of an iPhone 17 Pro Max. Now, there may be a couple of more hardware downgrades compared to the Pro Max. The information reports that there will only be one speaker, which would be the earpiece, due to the lack of internal space. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I do remember how big of a difference it made when the iPhone 7 allowed you to use the earpiece as a secondary speaker, as we then had stereo sound. Going back to a single speaker and also being the earpiece, which is quieter, yeah, I don't know about that. Also, the SIM slot is said to be removed entirely from this iPhone model, again to save up on internal space, which personally, I don't mind as I do tend to use eSIM, but I can see this as being a serious issue for those of you who live in regions where eSIM has not been fully adopted, as you may not even be able to use the iPhone 17 Air at all there. And I should also mention the display size, which is rumored to be 6.6 .6 inches, so a tiny bit smaller than a 6.7 on the iPhone 16 Plus, and quite a bit smaller than the 6.9 on the iPhone 17 Pro Max. And while 5G will of course be present, the 17 Air is said to be equipped with Apple's own 5G modem rather than Qualcomm's is, which is said to be smaller and more power efficient, although with slower overall data speeds. So we can kind of see the direction in which this iPhone 17 Air is heading towards, and that's design over specs. And there's one place where this is clearer than anywhere, and that is in the camera department. You may have noticed that we only have one camera module on our concept, and that's because according to the information and Ming Chico, the iPhone 17 Air has a single large camera module on the back that is also centered. Now, this is of course a big departure from having the camera module in the corner, like we've had since, uh, well, the very first iPhone. And also a big departure in terms of the number of camera modules too. Sure, the iPhone SE has always had one camera module, but the standard iPhone models have had two, while the Pro models have had three. So the fact that this only has one single camera module, yeah, that's a pretty major sacrifice for me. Now, this is rumored to be a 48 megapixel sensor, so probably the same one as on the iPhone 16 and 15, so you'd still be able to use that 2x sensor crop zoom. It's just that you won't have the ultra wide module at all here. Now, on the plus side, the front camera is now set to be a 24 megapixel sensor up from 12 with a 6 element lens up from 5 which is said to provide a significant image quality bump. This is something that's getting upgraded on all four iPhone 17 models, by the way. And I do think it's a good move for having crispier selfies, something that almost all Android manufacturers have switched to, and in some cases, we could see this in our camera comparisons too. But okay, having said all of this, how much is the iPhone 17 Air going to cost? Well, despite it being a replacement for the iPhone 17 Plus, the information reported back in May that it would even surpass the price of the iPhone 17 Pro Max. However, I just don't see that being the case, as it does come with some major trade-offs, like the camera, the small screen, the chip, and the RAM. So whilst I do think that it will be more expensive than the iPhone 16 Plus, I don't think it will surpass the iPhone 17 Pro Max. So if anything, I'd expect it to be either 950, so literally in between the old Plus and the Pro, or priced exactly the same as the Pro at 999. And by the way, on a bit of a separate note, we've just dropped this beautiful 8K wallpapers pack called Wonderful Waterfalls by Matty. It comes in 10 beautiful waterfall designs that look incredible on our studio display here, especially since they're all in 8K. But of course, you can apply them on your smartphone as well as on your tablet and give your lock screen a fresh new coat of paint. Simply download our app Wallpapers, which you can get for free on iOS and Android by searching or by using the links below.
All in all, despite its trade-offs, I am really looking forward to this iPhone. It's kind of giving me these iPhone 10 vibes, where you've got a super unique model that tries a lot of new things at the cost of some trade-offs. In fact, despite these trade-offs, part of me is actually considering maybe getting an iPhone 17 Air next year, instead of the 17 Pro Max. And yes, I know, living with a single camera module will be uh, quite the challenge, but I would love to try using a super thin phone like this iPhone 17 Air is said to be. And if you want to continue this conversation, by the way, feel free to join our Discord channel. It's free to join and link is down below. I'm Daniel, this is Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.